Welcome to another lecture by Medico Medics, Anatomy Chapter 2, The Skeletal System. In this lecture, we will identify the functions of the skeletal system, understand the structures and classification of bones, briefly talk about axial and appendicular skeleton, joints and their types, clinical relevance and common skeletal disorders, and end with a summary. Now let's start with the functions of the skeletal system. So first of all, it provides structural support. Furthermore, it's involved in protecting internal organs, like the skull protects the brain. It's involved in facilitating movement in conjunction with muscles. It stores minerals, like calcium and phosphorus. Furthermore, it houses our bone marrow, or bone marrow, for blood cell production. Now let's turn our attention to the structure of a bone. We divide it into macroscopic and microscopic structures. Now in the macroscopic one, we have the diaphysis, the epiphysis, the peristineum, and the medullary cavity that are very important. If you look at this illustration here, you will see that the diaphysis is covered here. And this is the shaft of the bone. It is much more rigid and is made to tolerate strong forces and to not bend or break. Towards the ends, we have the epiphysis, and it contains uh, spongy bone tissue. It is made of spongy bone tissue and it contains bone marrow. And in bone marrow is where we have the production of our blood cells, for example. On the outer layer of the bone, covering most of it, we have the peristineum. But it does not cover the articular cartilage. Now the articular cartilage is a specialized type of cartilage that covers the end of bones. Right, you see it here and here. And this is where they meet to form a joint. And this plays a crucial role in joint function by, first of all, uh, providing a smooth surface. So it allows bones to uh, glide over one another with minimal friction. Furthermore, it's involved in absorbing shock. So it helps to distribute loads across the joint during movement. And another thing is that it is protecting the underlying bone. So it prevents uh, wearing and tearing on the bone surfaces. Now, as we mentioned, the covering of most of the bone is the peri, uh, peristineum or periosteum. And this is where muscle tendons or ligaments attach to the bone. Now, if you look here, you see the medullary cavity. And it's a tube-like area that contains marrow. So, red marrow during childhood, which is then replaced with a yellow marrow as you age. And we have a lot of nutrients coming from arteries and veins to our bones. In the microscopic structure, we talk about compact bone. So dense outer layer, spongy bone, which is porous inner layer, and bone cells like osteoblasts, osteoclasts, and osteocytes. There is no need to memorize all of this right now. Just familiar, familiarize yourself with the structure of a bone. Now, classification of bones. Now, the classification of bones are based on shape. We have long bones, like the femur and humerus. And if you look at the illustration here, you see this is the humerus. And the femur is right here. This bone is the femur. We have short bones, right? Like the carpals, as you can see here. And the tarsals, seen here. So you can immediately notice that the tarsals 
are quite short. And so are the uh, carpals. The humor is, is quite long. And the femur is even longer. Then we have flat bones like the skull, ribs, and sternum. So we have our ribs right here. We have the sternum right here in the middle. And we have the skull here. Irregular bones like the vertebrae and the pelvis. Sesamoid bones like the patella, seen here. And just so you know, the femur is the longest bone in the body. So we have the axial skeleton, which is composed of the skull, which protects the brain and houses sensory organs. We have the vertebral column, which supports the body and protects the spinal cord. Right? It goes all the way here. We have the rib cage, which protects the heart and lungs. Total, in total, we have 80 bones. Uh, when we're talking about the axial skeleton, we have 22 in the skull, 33 in the vertebra, and 25 in the ribs and sternum. Now, what about the appendicular skeleton? It is composed of the upper limbs, so the humerus, radius, ulna, carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. It's all this right here. Furthermore, we have the low, lower limbs, which consists of the femur, the tibia, fibula, tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges. It's this bit right here. Another thing we have is the pectoral girdle, which consists of the scapula and clavicle. This is the scapula right here, and we have the clavicles here. This is the other scapula. And then we have the pelvic girdle, which is essentially your hip bones. In total, 126. And now, let's do some mathematics. So how many bones in the appendicular skeleton and the axial? We had 80 plus 126. That will give us a total sum of 200 and... Six. Excellent. Now, joints. Types of joints based on structure. So we have fibrous joints. These are immovable. For example, skull sutures. We have cartilaginous or cartilaginous joints. I have no idea if that's correctly pronounced, but let's go with that. These are slightly movable. So, for example, intervertebral discs. And then we have synovial joints. These are freely movable. For example, our knee, shoulders, etc. Then we have types of synovial joints. We have ball and socket, hinge, pivot, saddle, plane, condyloid. We will delve deeper into what all of these are exactly over the course of the coming lectures. But now just familiar, familiarize yourself with different types of joints. And if you're going to remember anything, keep in mind that some joints are immovable and some are freely movable and you have something in between. Now, bone growth and repair. So bone growth occurs at the epiphyseal plates in the long bones. Bone repair involves hematoma formation, callus formation, and remodeling. Now let's briefly mention some examples of skeletal system disorders. So common disorders include osteoporosis, where we have decreased bone density. We have fractures, very common, where there are breaks in the bone. Another common thing is arthritis, where we have inflammation of joints. We have scoliosis, which is abnormal curvature of the spine. Now, clinical relevance. 
Well, bone marrow is important for transplantation. In imaging techniques, we use, for example, x-rays for fractures. We use MRI for joint conditions. We use CT scans for bone detail. Another thing is joint replacement surgeries, like hip replacements. So in summary then, the skeletal system provides structure, protection, and movement. Bones are classified by shape and structure. The skeleton is divided into axial and appendicular components, where we have 80 bones here in the axial and 126 bones in the appendicular. Joints play a key role in mobility and stability. Understanding skeletal disorders is vital for clinical practice. And that's the end of the chapter. Continue now to chapter number three.